Hi class, Dr. Jim here. In this lecture, we're going to be looking at the first system of anatomy and physiology, and that is called the integumentary system. Now, integumentary is a big word meaning skin, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. We're going to look at the functions of the skin, what it does, the different layers, and then some of the accessory uh, structures that we have to keep our skin looking good and fresh and, and helpful all the time. Now, as the doctor always recommends, you got to take care of your skin because the skin takes care of you. And that's really important because it does. It does a very good job of protecting us from the outside world and making sure that things that are out there to try and hurt us stay outside and not get inside of us. And that's really what the skin is for. It's really the protective barrier from the outside world. And we're going to look at some of the functions and different things that the skin does that allows us to be really protected and make sure that we're free of germs and other things like that that can get us really sick. So let's take a look at the integumentary or the skin today. All right, so the first thing is what is the integumentary system and what does it do? Well, I already kind of let the cat out of the bag and talking about integumentary meaning the skin. But we're going to talk about all the different functions and roles that the skin plays. We're going to say what is the organ, which is the skin, and what are the three layers of the integumentary? And that involves the epidermis, the dermis, and what a lot of people call subcutaneous or what is also known as the hypodermis. So there's the word hypo again. If you remember back to hypotonic, meaning below or less, that's what we're looking at is the hypodermis in this case, which is the lowest level. And we'll take a look at all three of those levels. And then finally, we're gonna look at some of the accessory structures that are involved in the integumentary system. So this includes sweat glands, oil glands, hair follicles, and some of these other different structures that you have as part of your skin, you might not even think about, but you have all these things all over your body. And so we'll look at all these things and find out all about skin today. All right. So the integumentary system is the skin and derivatives make up the integumentary system. And just looking at this diagram, you can see the three layers of the skin. You have the epidermis, which is pretty much the dead cell layer. We're going to talk a little bit more about the epidermis and what it does. The dermis where most of the glands, the vessels, and the hair follicles all grow from down at the bottom. And then finally you have that subcutaneous or hypodermis layer, which is really fat cells and some other things. And you're going to be able to see this. I have some nice pictures that kind of represent slides of what you might see on the microscope. So again, it kind of gives you an idea of what the skin looks like from each level, epidermis, dermis, and then the subcutaneous or hypodermis layer. So we'll look at all these different things today. All right. So what are the functions of skin? Well, skin covers and protects the underlying regions of the body. And so obviously our skin covers us from head to to toe, okay? And we have a number of different layers. I like this. This is kind of taken from an ANP uh, book and what it just shows you is the different layers that you have. So you have the epidermis, which is that outside layer that gets shed every about every 3 days. You have the dermis layer, which is that layer underneath that uh, epidermis. And so if you ever had a sunburn or maybe you cut yourself and exposed or maybe even gotten burned on your skin, and that's the layer under your epidermis that really hurts when that peels off. It's kind of that fresh skin layer, you know, type of thing. And you peel your skin and all, and that kind of hurts. Well, that's because the dermis is that fresh skin. It's not the dead skin. And then finally, the hypodermis or that lower subcutaneous level, which is underneath. And then if you go below that, you get into the muscle and other tissue that's below that. Okay. Another big thing that skin does is regulates our body temperature. Now, the, the hypothalamus is responsible for regulating body temperature, but with the skin, the skin allows us to cool ourselves off. So when we get too hot, the skin releases sweat to cool us down and release some water out so that it cools our skin down and cools our body down. And likewise, when we get cold, we get those goosebumps. And those goosebumps are the contractions or the contractions of the muscle under the skin to come up tighter to kind of keep us warm. And so that's one way we regulate our temperature. Okay. Another one, it helps with excretion. And so we're going to talk about the oil glands and things like that. And so again, we're, we have predominantly hair on our head and things like this. We have oil glands associated with it to keep the hair from breaking apart and making it strong and healthy. Along with other parts of our body, we need that oil to keep the skin smooth and supple and not dry and cracked and other things like that. And so oil and sebum is very important for our skin to be healthy. Okay. And then finally, 
contains our sensory receptors. So when we talk about skin, we talk about the senses of touch, okay? And that involves things like touch, which could be pain, so we are heat, temperature, pressure, and pain, so all these different senses that we have. And so we know the outside world is out there because we use our sense of touch really well. So we know when things are hot, when things are cold, we know when things hurt us, when things are pressured, things like that. We know when things are against us. That's because our skin allows us to feel those things in the outside world. And without those senses, we wouldn't know what was really going in the outside world. You would step outside if you didn't know the sense of temperature. You wouldn't know what to wear because you wouldn't know if it's hot or cold or what was happening to you. And so that really gives you a picture to the outside world. And so our skin is really important for that, for that measure in itself. All right. So what are the three regions of the skin? Well, the first region is called the epidermis, meaning the outside, the epi or the top layer. And so this is stratified squamous epithelium. And you know that from our tissue lecture that we just had, the stratified squamous is a number of layers. Stratified meaning many layers or more than one layer. And then the squamous are the fried eggs. And so we've seen this before in our microscopes and then you saw the, the slides this week with the tissues or you will see them this week with our tissues and that. And they kind of have that fried egg, egg appearance. And you can see this really well in these slides here. If you did a cross section of our skin, if you took like a biopsy of your skin and you looked at the cross section, you can see a number of different layers of the uh, stratified squamous layer all stacked on top and really they kind of look like this these little skin cells that are layered on top of one another it's really kind of cool this is an electron micrograph of showing you what your skin cells look like and each day you push out new and new cells and these cells die and they become keratinized which allows us to be protected from water and other things outside in the world so that we don't you know come in contact with nasty things that get inside our body so it's really used as a protective layer and that protective layer is shed quite a bit and again we shed it to get rid of dirt and oils and other things like that that we come in contact with but also some of the nasty bacteria and other things that we come in contact with every day we do that shedding and so most of those dust particles you see in your house that's your old skin cells that get shed off every about every three days we re recycle our epidermis and so that's one of the reasons why we we see that and so that's the dust is pretty much your skin going everywhere and everywhere. So if you have lots of people in your house, you have lots of dust because you have lots of skin going in lots of different places, okay? Now, we also have these things in the epidermis called melanocytes, and melanocytes give us different colors of our skin. And again, you can kind of look at the, at the world and see where the different pigments originated. So some of you are much darker than me, and you know, and, and that the reason for that was it was based on genetics and where your ancestors came from. And a lot of it has to do with how much sun exposure you had in your ancestry. Okay, if you came from Northern Europe or Northern Euro, uh, European countries or maybe even Russia, those would be very light skinned because the sun wasn't as uh, as strong. So the rays weren't so you didn't need as much pigmentation to protect you from the sun's rays. If you came from areas like South America or Africa or even Southeast Asia or even Northern Australia, you're going to have a darker tone to you because the sun's rays are more intense at the equator. So the more sun exposure your ancestors have, tell you how much melan melanin you have in your in your skin. And so again, it's a way to protect your skin from UV radiation. And so it was allow allowing you to protect your body. It was your body's natural defense mechanism to protect it from the sun. So the more melanin or melanocytes you have, the more likely you're protected from the sun. Doesn't mean you can't get a sunburn, but it does mean you have more protection than someone that's very fair skin. And so that's just one of the things that we know about our melanocytes in our epidermis. Now, the other thing is, is bringing up the UV radiation. UV radiation can cause mutations in the DNA of the skin, and that leads to skin cancer. And we're seeing more and more cases. In fact, in the last couple of months, the, the um, not only the FDA, but the Surgeon General has come out with warnings on tanning beds. So you tanners out there, I'm talking to you especially. Don't use those tanners because you have a much higher increase in getting skin cancer from using those. I have personal experience because my sister-in-law actually had skin cancer. She was an advocate of going into those into those sun, you know, sun tanning places 
getting a nice tan and of course what did she have she had skin cancer at the age of 36 not a cool thing and I know and I we're gonna see this more and more as again we see these young kids going into these tanning places and getting suntans because they want to look dark they want to look healthy and things like this but it only leads to problems in the, in the future so you know trying the sunless tanners and some of these other things to get dark I know you might look like an Oompa Loompa or orange color but it's better than getting skin cancer in, in your life. And some of the skin cancers that you see are melanoma, which are some of these moles, these irregular shaped moles. You can have basal cell carcinoma, which is pretty large, and then you can have the squamous cell. And each one of them are a different type of skin cancer. And again, this is why the doctors always say, check your moles and check your things, because if they start to look irregular, that's when you need to be worried. And so if you do have some of these irregularities and you want to get them checked out, go see a dermatologist to make sure that you don't have one of these things popping up. The earlier detection, the better off you are for these things. All right, so the next layer is called the dermis, and the dermis is the deeper layer, and it's thicker than the epidermis. The epidermis, again, is a number of layers of that stratified squamous, where in the dermis you actually have a number of different layers inside there. However, the dermis is home to most of the functional parts of the skin, including you have muscle in there with the rectar pili muscle. This is what causes you to get the goosebumps or the goose pimples. You have the sebaceous glands, which are attached to the hair follicle. You have the hair follicle and the hair root. You have the blood vessels. You have the nerves in there. You have a number of different things that are in that dermis layer. And so you know when you get into the dermis layer when you cut yourself. If you start to bleed, you've actually got into the you got into the dermis layer. And so the epidermis doesn't bleed. So a lot of times you'll get a paper cut and it doesn't bleed. It just hurts like 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 crap you know you're like oh man that hurts and it hurts when you get anything into it but it doesn't bleed because that's still in the epidermis layer it's when you get down and you probably exposed a little nerve ending and that's why but once you get down and it starts bleeding you know you've gotten actually into the dermis layer and so when you see blood that means you got into that second layer and so just to kind of give you an idea of where that dermis layer is now the third layer is called the semi-cutaneous or subcutaneous or what we refer to as the hypodermis. I'm not sure in AMP what they're going to call it, but in our book they call it the subcutaneous layer. But I also want to put out there the hypodermis because you'll see this interchangeably used with these layers all the time. And that's really the lowest layer of skin. We don't really consider this a lot of times skin, but it really is. It's your adipose tissue that you might have on your skin, under your skin, so give you some insulation. It's also, if you look at the hypodermis, it has a lot more space to it. And that space is because you have a lot of adipose or fat tissue associated with it. The dermis is a much thicker layer, very tightly packed, where the hypodermis is going to have a lot of fat, might have some ligament, other thing. You might actually start to see more muscle fibers in there because it's kind of that in between the, the muscle and the dermis layer. And that's what we call the subcutaneous or hypodermis layer. And that's the connective tissue. And again, when we looked at the different types of tissue, you have all kinds of different connective tissues in your body. And that describes the subcutaneous layer, anything below that dermis. Again, dermis is still your epithelial tissue and things like this. But once you get below that, you're really getting the connective tissue. And that's gonna be your subcutaneous or hypodermis. And again, looking at it a slide, you can just see the hypodermis based on the big pockets of fat and things like this, okay? Now, what are some of the accessory things that you have and why do you have them? Okay, well, the first one is nails. And so the nails that you have, we all have nails on our fingers and our toes. These grow from the nail root and form a protective covering on the distal portion of fingers and toes. And again, it allows us to be protected. And so why do we have these nails? Well, it's pretty much a way to protect the ends of our fingers. And so it's not used as claws like some animals would use. We don't use it, but it gives us a little bit more protection for our finger tips and so we protect our skin by making these nail coverings and you can see that you have the root of the nail underneath the skin part of it and you can kind of feel if you feel around your nail bed you can actually feel the root and where the nail comes from it grows out and you can actually see the new nail forming under the uh, luna which is basically where the new nail is growing and it keeps growing on and on and on 
Now, underneath the nail bed is the dermis layer, and you can see that, and that hurts if you get anything under your fingernails. And of course, you've all experienced something on your fingernails, or maybe even gotten cut, and things like that, and that really hurts because that is the dermis layer. It's kind of the nail is replacing the epidermis in that part, and again, it's a protective covering over the tip of your finger and toes. Okay? Another thing you have are hair follicles. We have hair all over us. And again, some of us have more hair than others and that stuff. But again, begin it begins in the dermis and it continues all the way through the epidermis. And really what it does is it's a way, again, to insulate the body. Again, as we have gone through evolution, we've lost more and more of our hair because we wear clothes and things like this. So we don't need hair so much as a way to protect our outside bodies. But we still have it in specific areas, like in our head. Some people have it on their chest and their back and their legs and their arms and things like this. And again, it was, again, an evolutionary thing to protect us from the outside world, give us more protection from the cold, heat and cold. The other thing that's associated with the hair follicles are the oil glands or sebaceous glands. And these provide oils for our skin. Now, most of the time when you hear oily skin, you think of bad things, acne and other things. But really, oil is good for our skins too. It keeps it smooth and supple and not dry and cracked and painful and other things like that. So oil is really a good part of the body. It lubricates the skin and makes sure that it functions properly. So, you know, sometimes we produce too much oil in responses to things. And so that's when you go and see a dermatologist and they might give you other things or you might put on some moisturizers that help lessen the level of oil that you might have on your skin. Okay, and so that all comes from the hair follicles that we have throughout our body. All right, another important accessory that we have are the sweat glands, and these are found in all parts of our body. You sweat on the top of your head and even on your feet and that stuff, and this allows you to cool yourself down. Okay, you have actually two types. You have the incrine, eocrine uh, sweat glands, which are not associated with the hair. They're kind of their own uh, thing and what you do is you have these sweat producing cells that release water out of the cells and what it's used for is to cool the body down. So they go from the der dermis to the epidermis and it helps maintain a constant temperature. So when you get warm, your body reacts to that and says, okay, we need to cool down. Let's produce some sweat and cool you down. The other type is, is the apocrine uh, sweat glands, which actually are from the hair follicles. And so that's the difference between them. Now, I'm not going to expect you to know the difference between the eocrine and the apocrine, but you know, it's just something to know that we have two types of sweat glands, ones that are free floating kind of sweat glands or free in the skin and others that are associated with the hair follicle. Both do the same thing, release sweat to help cool us down and regulate our body temperature. And again, it's a way to keep us cool and, and refresh during the summertime, especially when you get really warm and overheated. Okay, so to summarize, the integumentary system is the skin and all the accessory structures. So again, nails, hair, oil, and sweat glands. These are all important structures that we have to do the functions that skin does. And that includes the functions of protection, keep the bad things out, homeostasis and excretion, again, to get some of the waste products out of us and things like that. And sometimes it's good to sweat to get some of those bad chemicals out of our bodies. And then also the senses of touch. I didn't talk much about the nerve endings and things like that. We're going to look more about that in the nervous system. But again, we are loaded with different types of nerve endings. And especially in your fingers and in your feet, you have more nerve endings there than you do in other parts of your body. And you're going to see that when we talk about the senses next week. Okay, but again, that includes pain, pressure, and temperature regulation there. And then, the, of course, know the three layers of your skin, the epidermis, the dermis, and then the subcutaneous or hypodermis. And know what they do. You know, the epidermis is used for protection on the outside. Dermis is where most of the key accessories are. Your hair follicles, your sebaceous glands, your sweat glands all start in the dermis. Your blood vessels are there and your nerve endings are all in the dermis layer. And then the subcutaneous is the connective tissue to connect the skin to your muscles and other parts of your bodies. And so that's also an important part. Also has the, the fat that keeps you insulated so it keeps you warmer so that you don't lose all your heat or you know all the cold coming in so it keeps you warm and that stuff as well. All right, and so we've come to the end of the integumentary system. If you have any questions about anything, please feel free to ask. Either ask me in class or send me an email. If you have anything else that you need to talk to me about, please feel free. I'll see you next time, and I thanks, thank you for watching.